Do you ever get annoyed when uh, when people ask you to do something, you just really, really don't want to do it? Yeah, I think we start learning this as children, and then when you start getting to the teenage years, they, they perfect it, that annoyance when, when, when they're asked to do something. I mean, they perfect the eye roll, whether you see it or not, the loud sigh, or just the, uh, you know. But, but that we, we learn that as, as children, and, and by the way, we all do that, even though we may be picking on you that are here, <laughs> teenagers. But, but we all do that, and, and we continue on through our life at times. As adults, we get annoyed. We just know how to hide it a little bit better. I mean, if you're married, you get annoyed, right? Yes. Yes. All right. Um, but, again, we, we start to perfect it. And we don't really do eye rolls anymore, but, but we can make pretty good excuses when we're asked to do something we don't want to do. We can, we can lie pretty well at times or, or put a real excuse out there uh, just because we, we really don't want to do it. You know, and God asks us to be obedient to him. He, he calls us to different things. He calls us in life. He calls us to follow him, basically. And sometimes he says to stop doing things, but we like our particular sins that we're, we enjoy. And, and so we get annoyed sometimes when we read God's word and it says to stop doing something. And so we, we bring in our excuses. Or if God asks us to do something to help somebody else, we bring our, in on our excuses. Because he does lead us. If we look last week at Jonah, and that's where we are. If you have a Bible, it's right about here. It's a small book. The easiest way is go to the front of your Bible. And look up Jonah. It's right here, that far back. Oh, it's real easy on a tablet or a phone in that. And this morning we're looking at just the fact that God's grace, because we're looking at God's grace through the whole book of Jonah, that God's grace is with us even when we run. So Jonah was a prophet of God. In verses 1 and 2, we looked at last week, it says, The word of the Lord came to Jonah son of Amittai, get up, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because their evil has come up before me. And we looked at how God speaks through his word. God calls us to help others. And, he, and the grace is there. And so he's telling them, telling Jonah to go to Nineveh. Now, we, we really don't know a whole lot of scripture and, and the context of it at times. Because Nineveh, where, where is Nineveh? How far is it away? Well, it's a great city. It's in the kingdom of Assyria, and it's about 500 miles away from where Jonah is right now. So he's not saying, hey, go from here and go to East Moline and preach against that city. He's saying, go to Nineveh, 500 miles away. Now, we have planes that fly over us because of our airport over here. We have cars going out there. We, I'm pretty sure everybody came in here in a vehicle. There it is. Thank you. But he was a little late. I, I, I timed it. I, he was supposed to come in 10 seconds earlier. <laughs> yeah, well, we didn't synchronize our watches very well. Um, but when, when God's telling Jonah to go 500 miles away, that's a lot. And so I was like, okay, so what's 500 miles away? And it's hard to find that just to look around. And so I've just picked out a, a city that's kind of east of us because that's where Jonah was going to have to go. 500 miles away. So it's like going from here to Cleveland, Ohio. Anybody been here to Cleveland, Ohio? Yes. All right, a few people. All right, what's in Cleveland, Ohio? Is anything exciting there? Kentucky's close. <laughs> Kentucky's close. <laughs> All right, so, I mean, but it's like God telling you, don't get in your plane, don't get in your car, don't get on a train or a bus, but I want you to go to Nineveh. So by walking, maybe by cart or horse or donkey or whatever, he's asking you to go that far away. Get up and go because they need to hear what God says. They need to turn from their ways and turn to God. Well, Jonah chapter 1 verse 3 says, Jonah got up. All right, he's, he's just obeying God. No, Jonah got up and to flee from, to Tarshish. From the Lord's presence, he went down to Joppa, found a ship going to Tarshish. He paid the fare, went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the Lord's presence. So Jonah is now saying, I want to run. God, you're here. You spoke to me here. 
So I'm getting away from here because I don't want to hear from him anymore. And I definitely wanted to go, don't want to go 500 miles to, to Nineveh. I don't want to go 500 miles to Cleveland, Ohio. I'm going to get on a ship and go to Tarshish. How far is Tarshish? It's about 2,500 miles in the opposite direction. So it's like Jonah is saying, God said to Jonah, go to Cleveland. And Jonah says, nope, I'm not going to do that. So Jonah hops on a, a boat in the Mississippi River, goes all the way down. This is where he's wanting to do. He's going all the way down the Mississippi River into the Gulf of Mexico, all the way to, to what did I say? No, Guatemala. That's how I had to figure it out, 2,500 miles away. I mean, that's drastic, isn't it? I don't want to go that way, not just 500 miles. I want to go a far away from you, God, far away. You know, and, and when God leads us, sometimes we are so obstinate. We are so dumb because he's trying to flee from God, right? He's trying to get away from, from what God is saying, what God wants him to do, he's, and he's running from God. But, you know, uh, God's not too thrilled with Jonah's decision. So, remember, Jonah has gotten on the ship. In Jonah chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, he said, But the Lord threw a great wind onto the sea, and such a great storm arose on the sea that the ship threatened to break apart. The sailors were afraid and cried out to his God. They're each one of their own gods. And they threw the ship's cargo into the sea to lighten the load. Meanwhile, Jonah had gone down to the lowest part of the vessel and stretched out and fallen into a deep sleep. God did this. God brought a storm upon the sea because of Jonah. And because of Jonah's obstinance, because of Jonah's sin, because of Jonah's running away from what God had called him to do, God threw a storm into the sea that was now affecting the ship and the people on the ship. Now it says these sailors were afraid. These are professionals. So this is some sort of storm. This is a storm so huge that, that they are now throwing their cargo. Now the cargo is what they're getting paid to take to, to Tarsus. So they're throwing their money out because they're afraid for their lives. And they're calling out to whatever gods that they're serving because they're afraid. They're calling out to whatever gods to help them because they were afraid. But Jonah didn't bother him. He's down, he's down in the hull of the ship just snoozing away, just having some great dreams, knowing that he's run away from God and he is just free to be his own Jonah. But again, Jonah's choice of not following God affected others. You know, our, our choices of sin affect others. Sometimes our choice as a, a husband or a wife, when we choose to disobey God, it affects our marriage. It affects our spouse. Sometimes it affects the whole family, our choices of sin. Although we think, hey, this is just me. This is just personal. This is just my choice. It's okay. But God wants us to follow him. And, you know, we've all chosen to do this, and there hadn't been a great storm that has come against us. But just the consequences of our own choices of sin affects other people. It affects people at your work. It affects people in your neighborhood. It affects people because of your own choice of sin. And we've hurt them. And maybe you know that very well in your own life. I do. And my choosing to follow my own ways had affected other people, and not in a good way. It brought trials all around me, and people had to experience the same trials because me not being obedient to God. But Jonah's sleeping. Other people are, in, are suffering and in trials, but Jonah's sleeping. So, verse 6. The captain approached Jonah and said, what are, you, what are you doing, sound asleep? Get up! Call to your God. Maybe this God will consider us, and we won't perish. Because all the calling that sailors, the sailors were doing to their gods had not done anything to the storm around them. It had not calmed the sea. It just kept on going. So the captain goes down to Jonah and said, Hey, Jonah, get up. This is the second time. God told Jonah to get up and go to Nineveh. 
And now the captain is saying, get up and call out to your God. Because maybe your God will answer. Because our God, our gods are not doing anything. Verses 7 and 8. Come on, the sailors said to each other. Let's cast lots. Then we'll know who is to blame for this trouble we're in. So they cast lots, and the lot singled out Jonah. And they said to him, tell us, who is to blame for this trouble we're in? What is your business? Where are you from? What is your country and what people are you from? So remember that the captain came to Jonah and said, hey, get up, call to your God. And evidently, Jonah did not. Because now the sailors are saying, we've got to figure out what's going on. So they're casting lots, whatever they have, maybe dice, whatever their lots are. They are casting lots and saying, I hope that these lots point out the person that has caused all this trouble to us. Jonah's running away from God. The sailors are afraid. The captain says, Jonah, call out your God. He still doesn't. By the way, it says those lots pointed out Jonah. The Proverbs chapter 16, verse 33, it says the lot is cast into the lap. That's how they did it back then. They cast into their lap. It says, but it, every decision is from the Lord. God can, God can get into play in every area of this life because he's God. All right, so back to Jonah. He cast lots. The lot came down to Jonah. In verse 9, Jonah answered him and said, I'm a Hebrew. I worship the Lord, the God of the heavens, who made the sea and the dry land. So Jonah is now confessing to them because it's all pointing to him. He says, I'm a Hebrew because I said, where are you from? And he's talking about the God that he serves. And verse 10 says, the men were seized by great fear and said to him, what have you done? The men knew he was fleeing from the Lord's presence because he told them. So Jonah confessed up completely. I'm sure he told the story that he was called to go to, to Nineveh. But now he's running away and he's caused all this turmoil. And he says that. And they say to him, what have you done? Why have you caused this pain to us? You know, our, our sins do find us out. Um, that's nice. My iPad needs to cool down, and so it's shut off. That's okay. I know, I know what I'm preaching. Our sins find us out, right? And I've told us how we've, we've caused problems with other people. I remember a very vivid, vivid illustration in my own life. It happened a few years ago when we lived in Missouri, where... You know, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the man who I was, uh, had a job at a church. I was a music and, and youth minister. And so I came home for lunch, and Redonda said, Hey, John, did, did you pay the gas bill? And I knew where it was. It was in the car. But I didn't want to get in trouble for my wife, so I said, Oh, yeah, I paid it. Yep. And she knew nothing about it. And so right after lunch, I said, i got to hurry to pay this. So I, I zoom on down to the, uh, to the utilities place, zoom on down right through the school zone, and then see some beautiful red and blue lights behind me, and they pulled me over. So this 30, like $35, $36 gas bill I had to go pay it cost me $120. And I know, without a shadow of a doubt, that this is what God was, was using in my life. He caused this storm in my life. Because I had lied to my wife. So I went back home and said, honey, i got to tell you what happened. So I told her the whole story. And she hugged me and said, that's okay. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> she was not a happy camper. Uh, I got in, in a lot of trouble. And I wish I could say that was the only time it's happened in my life, right? But we get, we get caught in our sin because we want to run away from God. We want to run away from God because we believe that our way is a better way. We believe that our way is the best way and that God's way is too hard, too out of the way, too sacrificial, not going to bring us any kind of joy or peace. And so we run. 
So, in Jonah chapter 1, verse 10, it says, Why have you done this? Verse 11, So they said to him, to Jonah, What should we do to you so that the sea will calm down for us? For the sea was getting worse and worse. See, even that confession did not stop the trials that were going on in these sailors' lives. But they knew, what are we going to have to do to you so that we will be okay? Can you imagine being asked that question in your life because you have chosen to disobey God? What are we going to do to you so that we're okay? It's a hard question. And so, in verse 12, Jonah said, he answered them and said, Pick me up and throw me into the sea so that it will calm down for you. And I know that I'm to blame for this great storm that is against you. So again, Jonah's doing this complete confession now. A complete confession that he's got caught in. That God led the sailors to so that he can confess. But just the confession doesn't always change the things around us. Just because we confess to what we've done doesn't change, mean that we've had a repentant heart, a heart that has changed and wants to go back to God. Just because we confess it doesn't mean we're not going to go back and do it again. Because it's not just confession, it's confession and turning away from our sin. But Jonah understands, he says, it's my problem. It's what I've done that's causing your trials. So just pick me up and throw me overboard. Well, they said, nevertheless, after Jonah said that, to pick me up and throw me over, it says, the men rode hard to get back to dry land. Because they didn't want to do that. But they couldn't because the sea was raging against them more and more. See, God knows what, what's going to be taking place because God is God. But these people didn't want to harm Jonah. And so they kept on rowing. And so then in verse 14, it says, They called out to the Lord, Please, Lord, don't let us perish because of this man's life. And don't charge it against us with this innocent blood. For you, Lord, have done just as you pleased. All of a sudden, these sailors who had been praying to the other gods are now talking to the God, the Lord of all, the Lord of creation, the Lord that saves. They're talking to him. And say, God, just don't hold this against you. We know this is your leading. We know this is your calling, but don't hold this against us. So verse 15, then they picked up Jonah, threw him into the sea, and the sea stopped its raging. Remember in the New Testament, Jesus Disciples are in the, a boat, and it's just a storm's going on, and Jesus stood up and just said, Peace to the sea. And this is going on different than that, because he had the sailors throw Jonah over. But as soon as that happened, the calm came to the sea. And then the men, verse 16, last verse we're going to look here in Jonah. The men were seized by great fear of the Lord. They offered sacrifices to the Lord and made vows. They figured out, because of what happened, that God was truly God. The gods that they'd called out didn't help them, but this God, thank you, Cloud, this God was truly God. We're going to look more at the grace of God, but, but God offers grace in two different ways. God offers grace to us even when we run away from him. Even when we run from what God is calling us to. Because that's where we've all been. And God has given us his good gifts. God has given us great gifts because of that. But what God wants us to do is not run away from him. To run towards him. When we find out that God calls us to love our enemies and pray for them. He says, run towards me. I will give you what you need 
to help you in that, even though you have great anger against them. Even though you don't want to talk to those people, you don't want to show love to those people, God says, run to me, run to what I'm calling to, and I will give you great gifts. So this morning, that's where we are. One of the two places this morning, each one of us are here. We're either running away, and it might be just a slow crawl, but I'm still running away from God. And I'm pretty sure probably God's not called any of you to Cleveland. Maybe. Maybe he has. But he doesn't want you to run away from it. But you know what God is leading you to do. Whether it's to, to stop something or to start doing something, whether it's to love somebody or to pray for somebody, or maybe it's to give your life to Christ, God is calling you to that. And when you run away from him, you're not just causing trials in your own life, but you are affecting others in your life. Maybe people you care for. But when we run to God, he gives us blessings. So again, this morning, are you running to or running away from God? Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your grace to us. You give us, God, what we don't deserve. You've given us life and breath. You've given us all that we have this morning. Father, I pray that we would turn to you. That however you're leading, we'd be obedient. Father, I pray that we all would run to you in Jesus' name.